Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students and viewers. In today's lecture I will talk about a very important and uh, interesting type of ad hoc network which is called vehicular ad hoc networks or vanets in short. Before going to start the lecture I would like to provide a context to the topic. Uh, that is vehicular ad hoc network. As we all know that vehicles uh, play a very important role in our daily lives. Uh, for example, we can use uh, different types of transportation mode uh, to carry people and goods from one place to another place. So there is a basic um, purpose of a vehicle. Uh, and we also know that the number of vehicles uh, on roads they are actually increasing at a rapid speed so the growing number of vehicles they are actually creating serious problems uh, these problems are related with traffic management uh, road accidents congestions on roads uh, environmental aspects for example air pollutions consumption of fuels and gases at a huge level Beside from these problems, uh, according to uh, a report uh, which was published by uh, World Health Organization WHO uh, about the road safety, uh, ac according to the report uh, they stated that more than 1.2 million people die uh, and more than 50 million people get injured each year throughout the world due to traffic accident. So having more cars on road actually means having more accidents and uh, more uh, casualties actually on the uh, on the accidents that occurs uh, between crashes among different vehicles. Similarly, if we consider Pakistan, uh, which is not an exception, uh, according to the latest uh, statistic which was provided by Pakistan Bureau of Statistics. Uh, it showed that during the year uh, 2017 and 2018 about uh, 6,000 people lost their life due to road accidents. So this is the situation of just one country. Uh, this is one aspect of the vehicles. The growing number of vehicles, uh, growing number of problems, growing number of accidents, growing number of casualties, etc. Another aspect is that uh, majority of the population is now living in the urban areas and it is estimated that about 60% of the global population will live in urban areas by 2030. So uh, this urbanization will also create extra problems for example uh, environmental and natural resources degradation uh, polluted uh, waterways, roadways, energy consumption will be increased and similarly uh, one aspect related with the transportation is that carbon dioxide em emission will also increase. Besides some socio-economic uh, problems will also be there for example uh, enormous losses of time in congestions in accidents and degradation of uh, life quality on one side we are trying to make our cities smarter while on the other side if we do not address the issues of transportation we will be facing these issues which are related with the environment with the safety of the people and the properties and some technical consequences as well so uh, this is a general context that vehicle can actually play an important role uh, not only in making our uh, transportation uh, a better place but they are also creating several problems so we need an urgent uh, solutions to address these problems which are related with the transportation to answer these questions the vehicular ad hoc network has been emerged uh, as, uh, as a dominant technology for addressing these issues so in this lecture we will be talking about the vehicular ad hoc network in details so here is a brief agenda for today's lecture 
uh, we will be starting from the objectives what we are going to achieve after attending this lecture uh, what has been uh, uh, what has been planned for this lecture what are the objectives what are the outcomes of this lecture after discussing the objectives we will be talking a little bit about the intelligent transportation system uh, which is called the ITS an important concept which is related with the vehicular ad hoc networks and then we will formally define uh, the vehicular ad hoc networks by focusing on their characteristics uh, the communication aspects uh, inside the vehicular ad hoc networks more specifically we will be talking about uh, communication among different vehicles and also about the communication between the vehicles and roadside infrastructure different applications that have been uh, developed for vehicular ad hoc networks related with the safety and non-safety aspects of transportation uh, we will elaborate them in details and then some components like the sensors on board unit and roadside units uh, we will elaborate them as well similarly uh, regarding <coughs> a vehicular ad hoc network different simulation approaches are available for the researchers for the students so we will also shed some light on the different simulation approaches that are actually available to the researchers and the students and then uh, we will talk more technically about some standard uh, and one of the standard is like the wave architecture uh, the market dominant standard uh, we will be talking about it and one important uh, aspect of the of the standard is the multi channel operation uh, which is very important uh, for understanding the concept of the vehicular ad hoc network and finally at the end of this lecture i will uh, talk about the uh, iot based vehicular ad hoc network like the integration of the iot based technologies uh, with the vanet and their importance in the smart city context so starting with the objectives uh, the main object of this lecture or this presentation uh, is that we will try to learn the basic concepts of these emerging networks which is called the VANET. Similarly we will try to understand the role of VANET in meeting the objectives of ITS so that is why ITS is part of our roadmap because the VANET uh, has been created to meet uh, as a solution for the objectives of the ITS and that is related with the transportation road transportation more specifically similarly we will be exploring some application areas of the vehicular ad hoc network by considering some exemplary applications that have been developed uh, in the in the in the past two decades uh, similarly we will get an insight into the current simulation approaches they that are available for the mobile uh, for the vehicular ad hoc network and then finally we will be able to explore the possibilities of how to integrate the internet of things smart cities and vehicular ad hoc networks so this is the agenda for today lecture and let us start with the intelligent transportation system uh, actually an ITS it comprises a set of technologies and applications and their aim is to improve the transportation safety and mobility as well as uh, increasing the people productivity and reducing the harmful effect of the traffic and one of the most harmful effect of the traffic is due to the congestions and the road accidents and we know as the statistics shows that uh, millions of people lost their life and millions get injured due to road accidents so this is a uh, a global problem that we need to address these issues so ITS is there uh, it will make use of a set of technologies and applications to improve our transportation safety and mobility and as an end result the, the, the life of the people the initial concept of ITS it was actually proposed by researchers in the United States in the 20th century however ITS are now attracting a great deal of attention from academia 
and industry because such systems uh, they will not only improve uh, the vehicle traffic conditions but they may also uh, ultimately make the transportation sector more safer uh, more sustainable efficient effective by avoiding the inconvenience that are caused by the traffic con congestions and the effect of uh, climate problems on traffic the environmental aspect the carbon dioxide emission and other fuels consumption etc so initially the concept was uh, proposed in the early 20th century but recently it has attracted a great deal of attention actually the ITS integrates uh, information and communication technologies and apply the ICT concept to the transportation sector so in ICT the system will collect data from different sensors and uh, equipment that are actually implanted or installed in the vehicles and these vehicles are called smart vehicles and not only the vehicles but also the roadside infrastructure in actually the, the objective is to make the contextualization of the information accessible this will allow for making inferences about the state of the transportation system of a given city so with this information uh, that we are actually collecting by using the ICT technologies, by using the sensors, by using the smart vehicles and smart infrastructure, it is actually possible to offer services and application uh, to the customers that aim to improve the management of the urban resources and increase the convenience of the people through the use of information and other, other technologies and services. So actually the ITS uh, will help to ease the traffic flows in the cities uh, by reducing the time spent in traffic jams and several examples are available for example Google Maps uh, and another application is Google Waze uh, by using which you can identify which areas of the of the city are actually uh, actually they have traffic jams so you can easily avoid them by taking alternative routes toward your destination and you are not only avoiding the traffic jams but you are also uh, reducing the fuel consumptions and as a result the carbon dioxide emission and monetary losses as well so the role of ITS is vital in making our transportation specifically road transportation safer efficient environmental friendly congestion free and enjoyable as well as we will see that large number of applications uh, have been developed for each of this area like how to make our transportation safer how to make them environment friendly congestion free and enjoyable we will be talking about the applications later on in this lecture so ITS because of its role uh, for in making our transportation uh, safer, efficient and congestion free uh, different countries have initiated different projects related with the road transportations for example in the United States uh, United States Department of Transportation is working on the issues related with the transportation similarly in the Europe uh, European Road Transport Telematic Implementation Coordination Organization or in short ATICO they are working uh, another example of the ITS system is Japan uh, where they organize actually an annual event and that is called the ITS World Congress uh, the basic objective of this Congress is to establish international relations with other countries uh, with the aim of making the transportation a safer uh, solution for the current issues similarly uh, if we talk about the Asia Pacific so ITS is trying to uh, facilitate the cooperation and coordination among its member countries from Asia if we see uh, the role of ITS this is the big picture uh, you see uh, when we are talking about the intelligent transportation system so it is not only related with the transportation at the roads uh, we can also apply the concept of IT as to communication among the among the aeroplanes uh, 
uh, among the boats, uh, train, transportations, and so on. So large number of entities are there. For example, for communication purposes, you can uh, use different options that are available. For example, satellite communication, uh, 3G, 4G towers, uh, RSUs, uh, WiMAX, etc. So you can use different uh, options for communication. Uh, similarly, different apli uh, applications are possible. For example, uh, travel assistant, toll collection, fleet management, adaptive cruise control, and so on. So different applications are possible because of the intelligent transportation system. And similarly, different type of communication, for example, vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle communication is possible, vehicle-to-infrastructure uh, communication is possible, and so on. So this is the big picture of the intelligent transportation, which shows that the concept of intelligent transportation is not only for, the, for making the road transportation safer, but it can be applied to other mode of transportation as well. However, in this lecture, our focus will be on road transportation only. That is the important aspect of the ITS. Now we talk about the, as we talked about the ITS, now it's time to shift our attention to the vehicular ad hoc networks. Uh, before talking about the vehicular ad hoc network, let us think about the automobile industry. World traditional and uh, new players in the automobile industry, for example, some of the names are Tesla Motors, Audi uh, manufacturers, Honda Motors, BMW luxury vehicles, uh, AG Automobile Company, Nissan, Mercedes, Benz, etc. Toyota for example just to name a few they are actually in the race of making their vehicles smart and autonomous and that is the need of the current era so these companies are actually incorporating the latest technologies into their vehicles beside from these automobile country uh, automobile industries uh, if we see, uh, for example, uh, we have examples of the Google self-driving -dri car and also the Apple iCar. They are also working on the autonomous and smart vehicles. So these automobile manufacturers are actually incorporating the latest technologies into their vehicles. And you can say that today vehicles, they are actually equipped with a large number of embedded sensors integrated cameras, actuators, actuators, uh, laser, radar, lidar technologies, GPS modules, GSM modules and also the now the emerging uh, one components would be there in the in the vehicles in the coming years. So the efforts from these uh, technology firms and also from the automobile industries they that is actually a proof uh, that in the coming era, for example, after 10 years, our vehicles are going to be much more smarter, intelligent, and autonomous. And they will not require the drivers anymore. And there is a joke in the ITS community that uh, previously they were trying to make the driver intelligent so that they cannot make mistakes while driving and then they get tired now they are trying to make the vehicles intelligent and our roads intelligent and our uh, infrastructure intelligent like they are now working on the machines to take part uh, to take the role of the of the drivers in order to make the transportation safer so information and communication technology is actually the driving force behind some of the most important innovations in the automotive uh, industry as well as the society more generally. So as I mentioned that automobiles uh, have been uh, incorporating various technologies and different sensors 
in order to improve the experience of the drivers and the passengers so in general this system are based on uh, increasing sophisticated sensors and actuators uh, that enable the vehicles to detect signals in the environment and also inform their drivers about the situations on the roads so additionally uh, the the modern wireless technologies they are also becoming mature and they are able to facilitate the communication among the smart vehicles as for example uh, NXP semiconductors road link team etc they are actually working uh, for example Coda wireless is another company they are actually working on building the hardware products for connected vehicles so uh, as we as we see so that uh, not only the automobile industry not only the transportation not only the government not only the academicians uh, they are working on on making our transportation a safer place but also uh, the industry that is related with the wireless communication they are also working on building wireless uh, communication components hardware for making the vehicles uh, for making the vehicles uh, enabling them to communicate with one another as well so actually uh, one it is a promising technology for ITS and it is playing a very important role to meet the objectives of the ITS basically regular ad hoc network it is a special type of mobile ad hoc network and uh, mobile ad hoc network in the mobile ad hoc network we actually have different types of nodes and they have different characteristics one of the main characteristic of the mobile ad hoc network is that nodes are free to move anytime in any direction so mobility is a key aspect of mobile ad hoc network that is why vehicular ad hoc network when we are talking about vehicular ad hoc network we say that it is a special class of mobile ad hoc network because of the mobility of the vehicles uh, in mobile ad hoc network the vehicles can move at a very high speed so mobility is there and actually the one it provide a wireless connection among vehicles and also between vehicles and roadside devices so in uh, one it vehicles act like the moving nodes as we know that mobile ad hoc network they are like the the more classical network but they have many types there are many types of emerging networks which are actually different classes of mobile ad hoc network for example a uh, regular ad hoc network is one of them similarly we have the flying ad hoc network which is called the fanet uh, wireless sensor network underground wireless sensor network under uh, underwater sensor network, opportunistic network, delay tolerant network, vehicular social networks and so on. So Marnet leads to the creation of different types of networks and vehicular ad hoc network is one of them. Actually Varnets are distinguished by the high speed of the vehicles. These are some of the characteristics. Uh, we will be talking about the characteristics uh, after a while but actually these are the characteristic as well for example in one it uh, the vehicles actually move at a high speed and they have a very small intercontact times between them similarly vehicles are moving in different operational environments sometimes the environment is urban sometimes it is rural uh, sometimes it is semi-urban uh, sometimes it is highway motorways uh, sometime it is like like the daytime the nighttime traffic conditions are different sometime it is congestions sometime the network is very spare we don't have enough uh, vehicles on the road etc so variable density is another characteristic if it is peak hour then the density of the vehicle is going to be high if it is not peak hour then the density of the vehicle is going to be normal and if it is night time so the num the density the number of the vehicle is very less a uh, similarly short range communication is another feature of the of the vehicular ad hoc network uh, as we are using wireless communication for 
a vehicular ad hoc network and mostly we will be using uh, the the hardware which is based on the IEEE 802.11 the same hardware which is used for a wireless local area network so the range is very very small so uh, that is another feature similarly we have like the intermittent connections between the vehicles uh, it is not always possible to have a vehicle with which your vehicle is going to communicate so sometime you will not be able to find any vehicle on the road in order to send a message or receive a message and also you have a real time data exchange requirements because of the inter contact time between the vehicles you have very uh, less uh, time available so for communication purposes so you have a real time data exchange requirement on the communication Okay, so in a uh, vehicular ad hoc network, uh, vehicles actually they are smart enough. You see, this is a, an example of a smart vehicle. Uh, we have different types of sensors available, different types of devices, actu actuators, etc. For example, we have cameras, front camera, rear camera. Uh, we have air condition sensor, we have the GPS device, microphone, we have speakers, we have different types of sensors. You see, inertial radar sensor, infrared sensor, pressure, tire pressure sensor, a gaze sensor, ultrasonic sensor, fuel sensor, etc. So, most of these things are already present in our vehicles. Right? Majority of the technologies are already available what is missing is the communication aspect so in one net vehicles would be able to communicate with each other and that is the key aspect of one net that we are actually working on making the vehicles to talk with one another to communicate with one another to send and receive messages to exchange information with one another so that is the basic idea of vehicular ad hoc network so vehicles uh, would be able to communicate with one another through short range radios and the communication is not only among the vehicles the vehicles would also be able to communicate with the roadside infrastructure through these short range radio and they can also use other communication uh, wireless technologies for example 3G LTE the futuristic 5G WiMAX technologies etc so you can actually uh, you have plenty of options available for making the communication possible among vehicles uh, this technological evaluation uh, evolution actually of the vehicular networks they are actually a type of emerging network that uh, relay on vehicles and they are embedded intelligent capabilities so these networks they actually differ from our traditional networks in many different ways the first difference for example lies in the nature of the nodes that form them such as automobiles trucks buses auto rickshaws taxis uh, personal vehicles etc and also uh, another difference is that the our roads the infrastructure the equipment attached to the roads uh, where they all have the wireless communication interfaces so actually they play important role as well so this is uh, one of the difference between the vehicular ad hoc network and other other types of traditional networks that we have available also another difference is the is the high mobility high speed of the vehicle and also their trajectories that actually uh, follow the limit and direction defined by the public pathways for example you know in advance the mm, the pathway of a public bus from where it is going and where it is going the source and the destination and the route that the bus will take you actually know it so predictable mobility patterns are there tra trajectories are there vehicular ad hoc network is a very interesting concept but on the same side it is actually it actually presents many challenges and these challenges must need to be addressed before their deployment at a larger scale you see 
actually some of the characteristics they are actually challenges for example the high mobility of the nodes the dynamic scenarios the scalability regarding the number of the nodes uh, they are among some of the challenges security and privacy why would you share for example your location with your neighbor car why would you like to share information of your car with some other cars what if somebody get access to your personal data what if somebody play with the with the sensors with the devices that are installed inside your vehicle right so you are actually opening door for the for the other persons and hackers intruders or malware software they can actually uh, get unauthorized access to all these devices that have actually installed on your vehicle so there are challenges there and they need to be addressed before a large scale deployment of such networks so here are some of the characteristics and also there are some of the challenges or reasons for challenges of uh, vehicular ad hoc network uh, some of the characteristics for example the first one is self organization actually this feature was inherited from wireless networks of which vehicular networks are a subclass it allows a network to self organize as it is a subclass of mobile ad hoc network and one of the characteristics of mobile ad hoc network is that it is self organized network so the vehicles uh, do not need support from any centralized authority for self organization any support from the base station from the roadside infrastructure they would be able to self organize themselves similarly another characteristics and that is uh, one of the most important characteristics is the mobility the nodes of a vehicular ad hoc network they actually may present a wide range of uh, movement speeds having high mobility in most situations for example compared with other wireless networks for instance car that can attain high speed on highways you can get a speed of 120 km per hour on the highways even higher than that but nodes have actually uh, limited in their trajectories in their pattern movement patterns mobility patterns they are actually restricted to public roads you are actually driving on roads and the roads maps they are actually available so uh, even if you are going to park your cars the information is available I, if you are driving if your vehicle is parked so actually the trajectories are limited such nodes can move only in places where cars can travel unlike conventional wide network uh, traditional ones mm, or traditional networks they actually have no geographical uh, limits and they can be carried you can carry your device anywhere which means that there are no limitation on the trajectories of the node while uh, there is a limitation on the mobility of the vehicles in vehicular ad hoc networks so that is another characteristic and one of the most uh, challenging characteristics is that we have a very small intercontact time between the vehicle more specifically if the vehicles are traveling in opposite directions so the time that they will uh, get to listen to communication of one the communication of one another is very small the speed of transmission in one is in one it must be fast so vehicles can reach a high an in constant speed and they actually uh, also travel in opposite directions which actually reduces the time of contact to only a few seconds to transmit the data so if you want to transmit your data to a neighbor uh, vehicle you have a very small amount of intercontact time so there is a special characteristic and a challenging one as well of the mobile ad hoc network uh, similarly we have another characteristic and that is related with the topology uh, as we know from the mobile ad hoc network that the topology is dynamic in nature so even though the location of the vehicles follow the layout of the streets the roads the highways the trajectory is somehow fixed but uh, they are really they are uh, relatively high mobility leads to fast changes in network topology and this might be a challenge to manage the topology is actually changing every second sometime uh, you have a uh, vehicles in your neighborhood with whom you can communicate with whom you can exchange while on the other 
on the other second you do not have any vehicle so the topology is actually changing rapidly because of the mobility another characteristic is related with energy one of the problem of uh, mobile ad hoc network is that nodes are actually limited same is the case with the wireless sensor network the main issue is the battery uh, the devices the nodes are actually powered by batteries so you have to consume less energy while you are transmitting while you are listening while you are uh, while you are processing information so the nodes uh, need to consume less energy however energy is not an issue in vehicular ad hoc network because vehicles can re rely on uh, relatively more power more energy the battery of the vehicle uh, is enough for transmitting a message to another vehicle so they can be equipped with significant computational resources because there is no restriction on the energy but we have restriction on the bandwidth a node may possesses a level of sophistication whereby it can uh, contain hardware to support several wireless devices making it possible to reach different networks and make use of more powerful communication strategies however the bandwidth available for communication or the or the or the frequency band that is allocated for the vehicular ad hoc network that is small so you have to make efficient use of the bandwidth right we will be talking about bandwidth later on uh, uh, when we when we start uh, discussing the standards for vehicular ad hoc network we will talk about the bandwidth there uh, similarly ne uh, network fragmentation uh, is a characteristic and the fragmentation of a network occurs uh, due to the reach of the communication radius and the high dynamic of the vehicles if we compare one it with the uh, mobile ad hoc networks in mobile ad hoc networks uh, we can actually experience transient periods of connectivity losses uh, similarly one it may undergo frequent extended period of disconnection specifically if you have low traffic on roads then obviously there are going to be network frag uh, fragmentations and also you would not be able to continuously communicate with your neighbors because there is no one in your neighborhood so the main difference uh, consists of the the movement the speed of the vehicles the very short transmission times and a highly dynamic and frequent network fragmentation so this is the characteristics that we do not always have infrastructure available we do not always have a uh, vehicles in our neighborhood so we actually do not have a continuous uh, networking facility so network fragmentation is possible uh, similarly we have some other characteristics like the environment in which we in which the vehicles are operate operating they are actually different for example sometime uh, you are driving in urban area sometime in rural area sometime on highways etc similarly we have variable density of, of the vehicles uh, you cannot predict the, the number of vehicles uh, the actual number of vehicles in advance sometime the there are large number congested road highways some time uh, we do not have much transition much transitions on the <coughs> uh, on the roads so we have more freely available highways roads so the density of the vehicles are actually dynamic and variable and we also have the short range communication and intermittent connections as uh, we talked about it in the previous slide so these are characteristics of the vanet some of them make them challenging some of them make them interesting and some of them make them uh, resemble with that of the mobile ad hoc network characteristics now let us talk about communication aspects of the vehicular ad hoc networks actually uh, there are different types of communication possible or different types of scenarios are actually available in vanet communications but we will be talking about two of them and they are very uh, common type of communication the first one is called a vehicle to vehicle communication or v to v communication in short the wireless communication among vehicles simply it is called vehicle to vehicle communication 
when two vehicles when two cars are communicating with one another wirelessly such type of communication is called vehicle to vehicle communication in the literature sometime the vehicle to vehicle communication is called car to car car to car communication or it may be called as inter vehicle communication or ivc in short so different names are uh, mentioned in the literature to refer to the vehicle to vehicle communication the characteristic of v2v communication is that such type of communication is actually uh, ad hoc in nature it does not depend on any infrastructure on any centralized authority so it does not car to car communication or v2v communication it actually does not require any infrastructure support to let the vehicles to talk with one another so in v2v communication uh we can say that vehicles actually directly send and receive messages to its neighbor vehicles now the question is why we need v2v communication in vanet so the main purpose of v2v communication is uh, to enhance awareness of the driver about its neighborhood uh we will be uh, exploring different types of safety related applications which are actually based on v2v communication so the purpose the main purpose of v2v communication is to enhance the awareness of the driver about its neighborhood and different safety applications uh, like the the post crash notification collision warning blind spot warning do not pass warning lane change assistant etc they actually make use of the vehicle to vehicle communication for their operation our second type of vanet communication is called a v to i communication or vehicle to infrastructure communication sometime it is also called i to v communication or infrastructure to vehicle communication so it depends actually the flow of the information if the information is from the vehicle toward the infrastructure then the communication is called v to i if the flow of information from the infrastructure to the vehicle then it is called infrastructure to vehicle communication uh, the communication between the vehicle and the roadside infrastructure that is called i to v communication uh, we <coughs> we actually know that infrastructure plays a very important role in any type of network one it is actually ad hoc in nature but there is only the case of v to v communication v to i communication actually rely on the infrastructure so the role of infrastructure is very important S same is the case with the roadside infrastructure in one it the infrastructure that we deploy is called the roadside infrastructure it actually plays a major role especially in the v to i communication as we saw the main objective of the v2v communication was uh, to enhance awareness of the driver here the main objective of the v2i communication is to inform the drivers about the traffic conditions or other hazards on the road as will is another objective of the v2i communication is to provide different infotainment uh entertainment services to the drivers and the passengers on the back seat as well so applications like uh, traffic signal violation warnings danger zone information speed violation information about the weather condition about the road condition about traffic management they actually depend on the v2i communication furthermore we can use v2i communication for other purposes as well other type of application as well for example we can use them for a uh, road side to for example we can use them for communication uh, for advertisement of road side services so we can actually advertise different services to the drivers to the passengers uh, when they are traveling between different cities so there is another aspect that we can use v2i communication for the purpose of advertising services to the drivers and to the passengers okay so as i mentioned the two type of communication they are very important v2v and v2i 
but we also have some other type of communication and that is called the hybrid communication so hybrid means the combination of the two or more than two so the combination of V2V and V2I communication is actually called the hybrid communication it will actually include involve V2V communication as well as V2I communication so uh, one use of the hybrid communication scenario is actually to extend the coverage area of a roadside infrastructure by multi-hop forwarding of the information towards the vehicle <coughs> which are not currently in the coverage range of the roadside infrastructure so that is very simple if you uh, for example the deployment of the roadside infrastructure to cover the whole highway the whole city is actually expensive a laborious task so what we do we actually install a roadside infrastructure at fixed location and then we allow the vehicles to store carry and forward the information that they have received from the infrastructure to other vehicles so actually we are combining the uh, V2V communication along with the V2I communication for the purpose of extending the coverage area of the roadside infrastructure and for that purpose we actually use multi-hop communication right and we use the store carry and forward approach which is very common in opportunistic network so uh, hybrid communication and that is actually efficient for opportunistic forwarding of uh, data towards the roadside infrastructure or towards the target vehicle with the help of uh, other vehicles they can actually store the message and then forward the message to other uh, to other uh, vehicles so it actually combine v2v and v2i uh, solutions okay we also have some other types of communication besides from V2V, V2I and hybrid communication. We also have communication which are called uh, V2X communication. And V2X is a general term which actually refers to any type of communication which involves a vehicle. For example, uh, V2P communication. A P stands for pedestrian, vehicle to pedestrian uh, uh, communication and there are plenty of applications available for V2P communication. Similarly, uh, V2 motorcyclist communication, uh, vehicle to bicyclist communication, vehicle to home communication, vehicle to network communication, vehicle to grid communication, vehicle to sensor communication, etc, etc, etc. So V2X communication is a general term which actually refers to all the types of communication that involves a vehicle. So this was about different communication uh, which are actually available in the uh, vehicular ad hoc network. And then we also have a graphical look on the different types of communication. Here you can see uh, in A there is an example of V2V communication b is an example of v2i or i2v communication while c is an example of a hybrid communication okay now let's talk about the applications of vehicular ad hoc networks uh, initially the purpose of one it was to promote safer driving conditions but with the passage of time uh, we actually introduces some other applications as well so let us talk about the safety application which is the dominant area and which is actually the purpose of creating the one it so the aim of a safety application is actually to reduce the number of road accidents these applications are targeted for making the transportation safer and accident free so these applications are actually sensitive to delay they cannot uh, accept delays which means that messages must arrive in time for vehicles or for drivers because they need to take appropriate actions to avoid accident for example a sudden break so if your vehicle is intelligent and if it detect uh, a sudden stop of the of the vehicle ahead of it then it will suddenly apply its own brake right so s sensitivity 
delay is not acceptable in such safety applications and in order to reduce uh, the message delay we actually use ve vehicle to vehicle communication the vehicle would be able to talk with one another we driver make mistakes but the vehicles if they are intelligent they will not make mistakes and they will apply they will actually apply the brake automatically for us in such situation there, there is only one example we will see some other examples of safety applications uh, right here so actually the purpose of this application is to increase the driver's safety and how that is possible that is possible by disseminating information about the accidents or any other information that concern the safety of the drivers and passengers as well perhaps an accident for instance uh, has occurred on a certain road or, or on a certain street uh, with respect to a vehicle location and traffic conditions etc so they can actually be communicated with other drivers so they can take necessary action well in real time so this information may actually help the drivers uh, and the passenger as well so some of the examples of the safety applications are mentioned here the first one is like the post a crash notification actually this type of application is used in the context of a vehicle which is actually involved in an accident accident an accident has occurred a vehicle has been involved in the accident so the affected vehicle began to propagate alert messages to other vehicles by using the data dissemination mechanism by using the wireless communications and it will actually inform other uh, vehicles about its location where the accident has been occurred uh, this message propagation is carried out so that it will inform other vehicles about the accident in a timely manner so that they can take decisions and call for a rescue for example and similarly you can extend the post crash not post crash a uh, notification to call an ambulance automatically to call the rescue teams automatically uh, you can actually find the vital signs of the of the drivers of the of the passengers that are involved in the crash and such information can be sent to a nearby hospital for example for providing immediate services etc so plenty of applications are possible for just for this one type post crash not post crash notification from communication point of view application in this class can actually use uh, both the v2v communication and v2i communication you can actually inform other vehicles about the crash and you can also inform the nearby infrastructure about the crash uh, another type of application which comes under the category of safety application is the cooperative collision warning and this type of uh, in this type of application uh, actually we try to inform the drivers about a possible collision course with another vehicle so here we actually try to avoid collision of the vehicles so the purpose is to save life to avoid accident so uh, by using such applications other vehicles can take actions to avoid an accident and for this type of application uh, we would actually require a set of sensors in order to detect the approach of another vehicle and to perform an analysis on the behavior of that of the driver who is driving the vehicle so that both drivers do not take uh, the same course of actions in attempting to avoid a collision so actually you collaborate you cooperate with one another another to avoid a collision in such type of applications uh, similarly we have the lane uh, change assistance as the name indicate this type of application monitors uh, the behavior of a driver when passing other vehicles or uh, when pass when changing the lanes if you are following a vehicles and you want to change the lane so a message is generated on the network informing nearby vehicles of a lane change right so he will take uh, appropriate action as well uh, we also have the the blind spot warning uh, uh, application sometime uh, we cannot see for example uh, intersections you do not have an idea whether uh, vehicles are approaching from other side or not 
so in such scenarios uh, you can deploy an application uh, like blind spot warning at and it will actually detect the vehicles from which are actually approaching the intersection and it will inform the driver so the driver will, will either increase or decrease the speed in order to avoid a possible clash uh, in the blind spots uh, similarly we have uh, emergency uh, electronic brake light application, left right turn assistance application, traffic signal violation uh, and so on. So these are some of the applications which are related with uh, with making this uh, the the, uh, the the safety of the drivers uh, with the, by avoiding the chances of accidents on the roads. And this is the basic purpose of the development of the Vanet to make our driving experiences more safer by avoiding accidents. Beside from safety applications, we uh, oh, this is uh, another view of the safety applications. Uh, you can see a complete list of applications here. Uh, but this is not the limit. Uh, you can also add some other applications to this category as well. Besides from safety application, we also have the known safety applications available. Uh, in this class of application, the focus is actually not on safety. So the focus is on comfort, on traffic efficiency and optimization and also entertainment purposes, right? from business point of view you can also implement ideas which are related with the businesses for example advertisement of the services is an application area which come under the category of non-safety applications so non-safety applications actually uh, they focuses on making the the driving experiences more comfortable more enjoyable more efficient uh, while the, dri the drivers or the passengers are traveling on the roads. So this is actually the motive of the known safety applications. Uh, some of the examples of uh, of these categories of applications, uh, they are mentioned here. Uh, these application, uh, they actually try to make our journey uh, more efficient and more comfortable not only for the driver but also for the passengers uh, by allowing interactions among passengers through messages through chats through playing uh, playing games through voice messages and so on so the list is very large but some of them are mentioned here for example road sensing is an application which come under the category of non safety application uh, by using sensors by using cameras by using computers by using communication resources uh, vehicles smart vehicles they can actually collect transmit and interpret information in order to assist in the acquisition of the data so to help the drivers to take uh, necessary actions uh, with the ability to sense and act in an environment vehicles actually become a great tool for smart cities not only in the vehicle traffic management but also for capturing re relevant in real-time information data are actually used in different scenarios so the sensed data would actually be the richest collection and computing platform specifically for the urban environments as we know uh, that a large number of vehicles are actually available and each of the vehicle is actually equipped with large number of sensors so we can use these vehicle as a source of collecting information from different regions and then we can take necessary action on the data collected from different sensors by different vehicles in different areas in different regions uh, you can also link this application with the big data analytics for example the v we have uh, more than 10,000 vehicles traveling just on a segment of a road on a daily basis so these vehicles if they are smarter if they have different sensors installed on them they can actually be sources of data collectors data muse they can actually collect the data and then they can transmit the data opportunistically to a roadside infrastructure and different decisions can be made over the data so big data uh, can be an application a, a can be an application area of uh, of the 
of the vehicular ad hoc network. Uh, similarly, uh, we have another category of application that is actually a known safety application and that is related to the traffic efficiency. Uh, there has been a large increase in the number of vehicles more specifically in the in the city cities area so the large number of vehicles they actually create problems because we have limited infrastructure we have limited roads so traffic congestions are very norm nowadays uh, you will see congested roads everywhere and according to a report by US Department of Transportation congestions can actually result uh, from certain events for example an accident road accident there is congestion an entertainment event there is congestion sale of sale on some items in front of a shopping mall there is congestion congestion uh, traffic lights are not working there is congestion congestion or people are not following the traffic rules there is going to be congestion so uh, we need a mechanism to solve this problem and such problems can be resolved not by improving the road infrastructure but by computational infrastructure by making the vehicles tra smarter uh, by helping them to manage the traffic uh, cheaply and efficiently so this class of application aimed at the management of uh, vehicular traffic uh, s by utilizing the the communication uh, and sensors uh, technologies which are already available in the smart vehicles. Uh, similarly, we have another category, category, and that is related with the comfort and entertainment application. As the name indicate, applications related to the comfort and entertainment they actually uh, try to bring information that provide uh, entertainment and also commercial activities for the drivers and for the passengers they are uh, usually designed to provide convenience and improve the quality of the trips if you are traveling for example from Peshawar to Islamabad and you require different services while you while you are traveling towards the destination city so actually different types of uh, comfort and entertainment services would be provided to the drivers while they are taking long drives from uh, between different cities uh, actually these types of applications uh, which are related with the comfort and entertainment uh, these applications uh, require that the requested information be made available uh, when the drivers need them like uh, two approaches we have the push based strategies and the pull based strategies so actually uh, we the drivers would be much more interested in the pull based services I want the services in which I am particularly interested not like the pushed services in which I am not interested right so this is another category similarly parking information is a well investigated area well investigated applications uh, in addition to uh, in addition from providing uh, f comfort and entertainment to the driver in addition to making the transportation efficient making the road more intelligent uh, another area is related with the parking uh, different technologies can be used for providing the parking information where is the free parking slot available where can I park my vehicle and this is a common problem actually we reach the parking area and we do not know where is the parking slot available so if you know in advance where you can park the vehicle you can actually uh, you can actually <coughs> you can actually helping the environment you ca you are actually uh, consuming uh, less fuel if you know in advance where you have to park your vehicle and also uh, we can uh, we can provide some location based services to the drivers and to the passenger and Google map is one of the example of providing location based services you can actually search for nearby services in which you are interested where is a nearby hotel where is a nearby restaurant where is a ne nearby petrol station where is a nearby mechanic available and so on and also uh, 
uh, another area is like digital maps download uh, for different purposes for example for navigation etc you can download the maps and you can keep them uh, while you are navigating while you are traveling besides from these uh, areas we also have another attractive area and that is related with the advertisement of the services to the drivers and to the passengers while they are traveling on roads Another aspect of advertisement is discovery of the services by querying other vehicles and by querying the roadside infrastructure. Uh, actually in such applications uh, the business owners they would like to increase their revenue by advertising their services, their offers to the travelers, more specifically to the travelers who are traveling toward their city. I am traveling to city B and I am interested in a hotel I want to stay at city B but I have no information about the rest uh, about the hotels at city B so the vehicles that are traveling from city B towards me they actually carry the advertisement that they have received from different hotels in city B and when my vehicle will come in contact with this vehicle I will actually query for these services in which I am interested and the vehicles will provide me the answers hey there is a hotel with this name and they have this special offer the location is this the contact number is this you can actually stay there these are the offers this is the price etc so we can actually use uh, such type of applications for business purposes as well on one side the business owners will actually get more revenues while on the other side the drivers the passengers they will get an opportunity to discover uh, these services is far ahead from reaching there in advance in real time by querying other vehicles. Uh, we also have some other applications which are not mentioned here uh, like uh, for example if you see here uh, we have more than hundreds of applications actually which come under the category of non safety applications so this means that it is actually a well investigated areas and more and more applications are added into the list for example for games for chat for information sharing for vehicle monitoring uh, for for assistance for for traffic for management etc this list uh, not only include the non safety applications but it also include uh, included the safety application as well the driver assistance the users uh, the environment related applications and so on so this was about uh, some applications areas about the vehicular ad hoc network and now let us move towards the components uh, that are uh, very important and they have a very important role in the vehicular ad hoc network our first uh, component which is called the onboard unit the onboard unit is an embedded hardware uh, which is mounted inside the vehicles in short it is called OBU the OBU is a hardware component and it has uh, different subcomponents it has a read write memory uh, to store and retrieve information it has a processor for processing the information it has computational capabilities and it also have communication capabilities right so all these subcomponents actually um, are are grouped together in what we call uh, an onboard unit. Additionally, uh, the onboard unit will come with a graphical user interface so they to exchange information with the driver, how the driver is going to communicate uh, with the vehicle, how the driver is going to send messages, to receive messages, instruct the, the, the vehicle how it will happen. So we need a graphical user interface and also beside from graphical user interface we actually use uh, need a GPS device as well for finding the actual location of the vehicle and the location can be shared with other vehicles for different safety and non safety applications although there is a question why would somebody share his or her location uh, but we can do it in an anonymous way as well so the solutions are available also and also we have a wireless interface for for making the communication possible uh, 
So the onboard unit is actually installed on the smart vehicles. It will have the storage capability, it will have the processing capability, it will have the communication capabilities and it will have additional components like the graphical user interface, the GPS device and antenna will be installed on top of the vehicle for example on the roof of the vehicle which will allow the short range communication among vehicles and also between the vehicle and the roadside unit. So we talked a lot about the roadside unit. What is actually the roadside unit? So like the onboard unit, our roadside unit is also an essential component of the vehicular ad hoc network. However, the main difference between the OBU and the RSU is OBU is installed on the vehicle. So it is, it is mobile in nature while the RSU are installed on the road sides or on fixed locations so they are stationary units it can be installed on highways on important locations like intersections like parking slots uh, parking parking slots and like the different services providers business owners will have to own their own RSUs for advertisement purposes and so on so they are actually stationary uh, and uh, they are installed at fixed location uh, the similarity is that like the OPU RSU has a read write memory, it has the processor, it has the computational capability, it has the uh, the communication capabilities, uh, uh, it, will ha it will come with a wireless interface, however as they are fixed so we can act actually extend the the capabilities of the RSU we can actually connect them with a wide connection we can actually connect them as uh, to the internet so they can actually play the role of a centralized entity as well they can actually be our backbone and actually these RSU are going to be under the control of the government entities for example highway authorities uh, etc so they are actually uh, reliable you can actually operate them under the government entities or maybe some third party trusted brokers they can also look, they can also be responsible for the deployment and for the monitoring of the RSU uh, similarly another role of the RSU is in the implementation of the security and privacy mechanisms for example how to distribute the keys how to to, to how to encrypt the messages, uh, cryptographic functions, authentication services, etc. So security and privacy and trust issues, uh, they can be actually implemented at the RSUs as well. So these two are the basic components which are playing a major role in VANET. Now let us talk about uh, simulation approaches. If somebody is interested to do research in this field, so what are the options available? Actually in Vanet, performing field tests are real world experiments, especially at a larger scale. That is difficult and also expensive. Why? Because it will require many technological efforts. For example, how to deploy the RSU, where to deploy them, uh, how to mount uh, OBU in vehicles, uh, how to install the antennas, uh, and also the logistic issues. Uh, furthermore, it is difficult to repeat the experiment with different uh, parameters, and the cost is also a factor. You will require labor for installation, and also uh, if you want uh, uh, to do some experiments, you will need vehicles. So how? For example, if you require 100 vehicles for an experiment, that is a problem. 100 drivers, 100 vehicles, fuel consumption, cost is another factor, permissions, uh, congestions on the highways, for example, if you want to perform an experiment with a low speed. So different issues are there. So we need an, al an alternative solution and the alternative is network simulations and different network simulator tools are available for the, uh, for the for the communities, for the academicians, for the researchers, for the students, uh, so that they can perform their experiments uh, um, in a more authentic way, which are close to or which can resemble the real world experiments. And we also have different simulation approaches available uh, for performing experiments with the vehicular ad hoc network. Our first approach for the simulation is called isolated a simulation approach actually in this approach uh, you have to generate the mobility uh, the traces of the vehicle first and then you have to provide them to the uh, to the 
to the network simulator so in this approach we actually have to uh, to do two things one thing is mobility related and the second thing is communication related so actually we need two simulators separate simulations the first simulator will actually generate uh, mobility patterns of the vehicles while the second simulator will actually perform the communication among the vehicles and between the vehicles and the roadside infrastructure whenever you want to perform simulations for vehicular ad hoc network you have to keep in mind that you have to deal with two aspects first aspect is mobility of the vehicles and the second aspect is communication so some simulator approaches simulation approaches for example the isolated one it actually decouples the two simulators first you have to use the mobility generator simulator which is used for creating the mobility of the vehicles and then you have to use the network simulators which actually allow the communications among the vehicles so actually these two simulators are independent from one another first thing is that the mobility generator uh, simulator will actually generate the mobility traces which is then provided as an input to the network simulator however in this approach uh, the two simulators have no interactions they have no coordination you actually cannot control the vehicles mobility from the network simulator so you have to use two different simulators for mobility purposes you can use some well-known simulators like the sumo paramex uh, mobisim etc one at mobisim etc while for the network simulator different options are available for example you can use the ns2 the ns3 omnet plus plus cownet etc so different approaches are available uh, graphically if we see the isolated simulation approach here you can see two different simulators two different worlds the traffic generation and the network uh, simulator so first you have to use the traffic generator simulators to generate the vehicular traces and then you have to to provide the output from this uh, from this simulator as an input to the network simulator and then you have to play with the communication aspect communication aspects of the vehicles right so this is the isolated approach that is why it is called isolated because the two uh, network simulators they are isolated from one another and you see we have no control you cannot control uh, the vehicular traces from the network simulator it is like a one-way traffic from the traffic generator towards the network simulator one-way traffic you have no control over the traffic generator from the network simulator so this is the first approach our second approach is called embedded uh, simulation approach actually it combines the functionalities of the two simulators instead of using two different simulators for two different purposes we can actually use a single simulator for the two purposes means that one simulator would be able to generate the mobility patterns the mobility traces and the same simulator will allow the vehicles to talk with one another to communicate with one another so actually you put you put the things in a single simulator but the drawback is that the simulator is going to be very simple because these simulators are designed from the scratch and they have the ability to simulate uh, vehicle mobility as well as their communication their their construction is very simple you can use them for simple simulation purposes and the advantage is that it will allow by mm, interaction between the two modules the mobility module would be controlled uh, is possible to be controlled from the uh, from the communication module but again this is very tra a very 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 simple approach and some of the examples of simulation that fall under this categories are mentioned here vissim is one of the common one and we also have the the national uh, xiao tong university network simulators and also some mobility uh, another simulator is mobility uh, model generator for vehicular networks but all of them are very simple and they are used for simple simulation purposes not for sophisticated and this is a graphical representation of the embedded simulation approach you see we have a simple module a single module but inside that module we have two sub modules 
the first one is for traffic the second one is for network and we have the bi-directional communication possible between the two modules right so this is the second approach and finally we have the federated simulation approach the much more sophisticated approach and the most commonly used approach uh, most appro uh, appreciated approach is actually the federated simulation approach is uh, this is also called online simulation approach this is much more advanced and recently developed approach for performing vehicle hoc network simulations actually this approach uh, take advantage of the existing state of the art network simulators and mobility simulators and then it combine them with the help of an interface actually the role of this interface is uh, a very common very important actually the role is very important of this interface it will allow uh, bi-directional communication between the two simulators and this will allow the two simulators to work in parallel in this approach the traffic simulator does not actually generate uh, the static mobility traces instead it is generated simultaneously with the network simulator an example of this approach is trans simulator which actually links the mobility simulator sumo with an s2 by using the trace i interface uh, similarly another example of a simulator which come under this category is wins and that is very much common approach the wins uh, simulator actually link the same mobility uh, simulator which is called the sumo but with omnet plus plus so by using the trace i interface so if you are interested in performing simulations with a vehicle red hawk network i would recommend to use the wien simulator it will actually uh, couple together the omnet plus plus simulator along with the sumo simulator sumo would be used for generation of the mobility traces while the omnet plus plus would be used for communication purposes and there is well documented uh, uh, tutorials available how to perform simulations uh, by using Wien's framework so i would recommend to go for Wien's and this is a graphical representation of the federated approach uh, you see we have the traffic generator and we have the network simulators they are two diff different modules but they are linked together with the help of a common interface and the interface is called the trace i and we have the bi uh, directional communication possible between these two modules right so this is the federated approach okay now uh, let us move our attention to some technical aspects of the vehicular ad hoc network and there is something which we call the wave architecture first thing first wave actually stand for wireless access in vehicular environments and this is basically a milestone for 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 vehicular ad hoc network it is actually proposed by the IEEE wave a actually it follows the o osi layered architecture if you see we have the application layer on top and we have the physical layer at the bottom so it actually follows the tcp or osi layer architecture however it incorporates uh, two protocol stakes you see we have a line here we have two protocol stakes within one. First one is based on at the network layer it is based on IP version 6 while the second one is based on WSMP which stand for wireless uh, simple mail protocol sorry uh, wave short message protocol so we have two independent protocol stacks one is the traditional IP version 6 this one is used for a typical internet based application while the WSMP is proposed for time critical applications like we saw the safety applications and some of the non safety applications and what you see in the wave architecture are different standards 
which are mentioned here for each layer we have a working group for each layer we have a standard so let us start with some of the standard one of the standard which is not mentioned here is the IEEE 1609.1 and the main purpose of IEEE 1609.1 standard is to grant access to the system resources resources could be like memory user interface processor or even other devices which are connected with the onboard unit or with RSU an important standard is called uh, IEEE 1609.2 and you see here it is something which is related with the security like any other communication network one its demand for high level of secure and private communication unfortunately uh, the protocols at the bottom layer like IEEE 802.11p they does not provide built-in security functionalities at the physical layer for the exchange of of messages uh, which raises concern about security and privacy so uh, to answer those uh, to answer to solve those concern actually uh, we have a separate module a separate standard for providing security and that is defined in the standard IEEE at a 2 dot at uh, IEEE 1609.2 standard which is dedicated for security purposes it actually addresses the security and privacy issues and the recent uh, version of this standard actually defines core security and privacy services for the vehicular communication it actually defines the format for securing management and application layer messages uh, the security measures defined in the standard would protect the messages from different types of attacks like message alteration, message replay attack, uh, spoofing IDs, eavesdropping, denial of service attack etc. Additionally the standard defines a PKI public key infrastructure scheme for authentication and it actually uses anonymous privacy scheme which is called the use of pseudonym pseudonym pseudonyms for providing the privacy uh, another use could be a trusted a CA certifying authority they actually provide these one-time use pseudonyms to each and every vehicles so the the vehicles will contain a list of them for sending messages without disclosing their identities as I mentioned before nobody would like to to disclose their identity with their locations right due to privacy concerns so the solution is the use of pseudonyms I'm sorry if I pronounce the word wrongly okay another uh, standard in the protocol suite is called the IEEE 1609.3 and you see it actually refers to the alternative protocol uh, for the network layer and for the transport layer it actually covers both of the layer and that is called the wave short message protocol WSMP actually the networking services are handled by <coughs> the standard 16093 and it providing like the addressing and message forwarding functionalities to the wave devices it actually deals with the transport layer and the network layer services of the wave architecture well this is actually a new protocol and this is an amazing protocol it actually allow the communication of of small messages real time messages safety related messages and it actually eliminate the network layer packet overhead that we actually have at if we are using these layers so uh, the messages that we actually use or that make use of the WSMP protocol they are called WSM wave short messages another very important standard that is the IEEE 1609.4 the main purpose of uh, of this standard is to accommodate the multi-channel operation I will talk about multi-channel operation after a slide or two but uh, the objective here is to give support to simultaneous operation of both the safety and non safety applications if you are using only safety applications then 
the non safety application will suffer and if you are using only non safety application then the safety application will suffer and that is the scenario if you are not using the multi key, multi uh, channel environment so the multi channel environment will allow us or will allow the safety and non safety application to work simultaneously actually this standard enhances uh, the performance of the of the physical layer protocols by supporting the operation of both types of application at the same time so the details are coming later on about the multi channel operation but it is actually provided in this standard and it actually you see it is something which is related with the mac clear the data link layer so uh, these schemes are actually related with the mac clear uh one more thing we talked about multi channel so in one it a vehicle could have a two type two types of channel would be available one type of channel is called the control channel while the other type of channel that is available to the vehicle is called the service channel control channel would be dedicatedly used for safety related messages while the services channel they can be used for either safety or non safety applications okay uh, now moving toward the the physical layer uh, we also have a standard at the physical layer and that is called the IEEE 802.11p as you see 802.11 so it is something which is uh, based on the IEEE 802.11 standard and that is uh, commonly used for wireless local area network or Wi-Fi the P is actually a cross layer standard protocol and it is designed for make and physical layers of the IEEE web architecture you see it covers both the layer data link layer can be divided into two sub layer and the, the bottom layer of the make layer the data link layer that is actually covered by the IEEE 802.11 a P protocol so it is a cross layer standard protocol because it it covers the physical layer and part of the data link layer an important feature of the P protocol is that it is fully distributed in nature well for physical layer some amendments were made to the IEEE 802.11a protocol so you can say that P is actually based on IEEE 802.11a protocol for the physical layer and for the make layer some changes are made within the IEEE 802.11e standard protocol the changes what are the changes uh, the changes uh, will be mentioned here for example uh, in the 802.11p protocol we actually use the OFDM technology right and uh, that is actually taken from the IEEE 802.11 11a and for the mac layer uh, we actually uses the edsa scheme which is called the enhanced di distributed channel access and that is actually taken from the ieee 802.11e uh, protocol so these are the similarities uh, but uh, the differences are also important to mention so at the mac layer the differences between the a and p is the multi channel operation support in the a protocol we do not have support for the multi channel operation while in the P protocol we have the multi channel operation support right uh, for the physical layer of the P the main challenge was related with the bandwidth in the A protocol the bandwidth is 20 megahertz while in the P protocol the bandwidth available is only 10 megahertz so there is a challenge and there is a change actually as well uh, similarly we have changes the the data rates that we have available in the A for example in the A standard the data rates that are available are 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48 and 54 Mbps while uh, at the P we have like the half data rates available instead of 6 we have 3 instead of uh, instead of instead of 54 uh, we have 27 available and so on 
we also have data rates of the same level for example we also have support for 9 12 18 24 uh, mbps available still we have changes the data rates at the p uh, similarly another characteristic of p which is different from a is that p does not require a bss basic service set if you are familiar with the wi-fi operation uh, then uh, you must know that we have an access point and there is a concept of basic service set and extended service set so actually P does not require such thing and this feature will allow the vehicle to exchange data at a high speed in a high speed environment because remember from the characteristics we have a very little intercontact time between the vehicles and among the vehicles and between the vehicle and the roadside infrastructure especially if they are moving at high speed so if we spend time in authentication authorization and permission from the base station then uh, we will actually miss the actual part which is the data transfer so this is the the main difference between the p and a that we do not require uh, to form a basic service set as we required in the a standard right so this is another uh, difference between a and p uh, standard and lastly the speed the P can actually support the speed of vehicle at a high for example if you are using A standard then obviously there are problems but if you are using P standard for vehicular communication then it can support speed of if I am not wrong up to 200 km per hour right it has support available so you can actually use them for high speed uh, vehicle as well and also beside from the IEEE standards we also have uh, some standard like SI J2735 and SI J2945.1 standard so actually they lie on top of the wave and they the SI stand for Society of Automotive Engineer and it is actually a standard developed by them this standard will uh, will define the syntax and semantic of the of the messages mostly related with the safety related like roadside alert signal status emergency vehicle alert message if you are working for the safety related applications then you have to consider the use of this standard because they define the syntax and, and semantics of such messages right so uh, this was about some of the standards uh, that have been proposed for the wave architecture and now as I promised that we will be talk about uh, we will talk about the multi-channel operation after a slide or so so here is the multi-channel operation uh, well in order to increase uh, the safety on roads in order to reduce traffic congestion air pollution uh, the United States Congress they actually authorized the creation of a program which they called intelligent vehicle highway system and then they assigned the responsibility to the US Department of Transportation and then uh, they pay, uh, they actually goes for a petition to reserve the band for vehicular communication and then uh, they succeeded the FCCC granted uh, them the uh, granted the request in 1999 uh, with the spectrum specifically dedicated for vehicular ad hoc network and that is called the DSRC spectrum uh, DSRC actually stand for dedicated short range communication and DSRC actually supported uh, short to medium range communication of up to 100 or 1 kilometer in hour theoretically but practically that is not possible well what is important in the multi-channel operation is that the allocated spectrum is divided into seven channels of 100 megahertz each and beside we have a 5 megahertz guard channel at the start of the spectrum so for one net we actually have seven different channels available among these channel the most important channel is called the control channel and it has a number and the number is 178 this channel is dedicated to the use of safety applications and announcement of WSA wave service advertisement but we will not go into the details 
the channels remaining channels uh, from 172 to 184 no the two channels 172 and 184 at the corners of the channels they are also reserved for critical safety and high power safety applications now we uh, totally we have seven channels one is reserved for the uh, one is one is reserved for the safety applications while the other two are also reserved for safety and high power s applications the remaining four channels they are called the service channels and they can be used either by the by the safety applications or by the non safety applications so if we graphically see the channels it's like this this is the dedicated spectrum uh, we have seven different channels this is the guard band at the start of the spectrum this is the control channel which is dedicated for the safety applications these two are reserved as well and the remaining four channels they can they are called the service channel they can be actually used by the safety application as well as by the non safety applications so they are available <coughs> And another thing is that control channel is also used for WSA, which stands for Wave uh, uh, sh Service Advertisement. Wave Service Advertisement. So, what does that mean? For example, if you want to offer a service as channel at channel number 180, so you need to advertise it properly by using the control channel. By using this channel, the vehicle will come to know about the service and the channel on which the service is available. So if they are interested in availing that service, they will actually attune to this channel and then they will avail the, avail the service uh, on this channel. Okay, uh, this was about the technical issues of uh, the WAVE architecture and uh, the services that we have available. Now finally let us talk a bit about Internet of Things based a vehicular ad hoc network. Well, uh, the objective of uh, this lecture was to give you an overview about the vehicular ad hoc network. But uh, we also have different types of one it available one it itself is a special type of mobile ad hoc network but then with the passage of time other areas also emerges other types of network within the one it has been emerged for example uh, we have a uh, vehicular cloud available vehicular stn vehicular social networks vehicular sensor networks vehicular fog networks uh, vehicular edge networks iot based one it etc 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 so it could be uh, iot based one it could be considered as a subtype of one it or you can say the integration of iot along with one it is the iot based one it and basically uh, we required this integration for a smart city and you know the concept of smart city actually the smart city uh, exploit the use of ICT information and communication technologies to improve the quality and the performance of the modern cities for example to make efficient use of energy to make efficient use of city utilities to make efficient use of the infrastructure to make efficient use of other resources like water like natural gas uh, like fuels like electricity etc and also one of the important component of the smart city is related with the transportation similarly other services are consumptions wastage all of these are the services so smart cities are uh, depend completely on the on the on the ICT technologies and on the other hand an important component of the smart city is internet of thing so smart cities are actually IOT based so IOT based smart city applications uh, can be categorized on the basis of network type scalability coverage flexibility heterogeneity uh, and user involvement etc in general uh, the applications for the smart cities can be grouped 
into different categories as well but we are not going into the details our focus is on the integration of uh, IOT along with uh, Vanets uh, for example if you are interested in interested in different smart cities uh, there are some examples available you can go through the literature to find about them I know for example uh, one of the smart city is Barcelona and they have made significant reforms uh, to turn itself into smart city and what they have done actually they are using the ICT for transforming companies institutions uh, universities uh, technological centers incubator centers and even the residents uh, in in the field of automation so they have started smart city initiatives in terms of connectivity and they are actually using the 3G and 4G technology, the Wi-Fi mesh networks, sensor networks, publicly available Wi-Fi networks and they are actually developing a mobility plane like the heating and cooling s systems plane they are actually developing a new energy networks etc so they are actually working to make a Barcelona a smart city by utilizing different communication networks and different types of uh, publicly wi publicly available networks to make the city a smarter city and the aim is to provide better services to the citizens to provide better responses quick responses in case of emergency situations for example similarly another example of smart city is Stanford um, it is it has also risen as a smart city uh, and they have initiated a program uh, which is focusing on smart metering with the aim of facing uh, new energy conservation regulations and uh, stimulating economical growth and actually they are focusing on mesh white area network and they are utilizing a standard which is called 802.11n and the standard is from the devices are from Motorola uh, they have actually they used these devices as an outdoor access point and they have built a system uh, and they also address security aspects uh, and the main purpose is that at the start uh, of the month they actually read the meters and then calculate uh, etc so actually they, they place the meters at 200 homes and they form a mesh networks of home uh, with 40 access point across the city we also have another example of a smart city and that is related with the Singapore Singapore is also uh, engaged in the journey toward more sustainable and smarter city okay so these are some of the smart city examples but smarts in the smart cities IOT is actually uh, playing its role and transportation is one of the component of smart city and for transportation one it is the solution so we can actually get more advantages if we integrate the emerging IOT concept with the emerging one networks so uh, Internet of Things is actually a revo revolutionary, revolutionary, revolutionary communication paradigm that uh, bring forth an invisible and innovative framework to connect a large number of digital devices with the internet. So this is the, ba the basic concept of internet that even each and every molecule on the earth would be able to communicate with the internet that is a dream of the future so internet of thing is just the initial steps what we do we are actually connecting our physical devices with the internet right so internet of thing is playing a major role in the smart city deployment and uh, transportation is one of the component of the smart uh, cities so what would be the benefit if we integrate IOT along with VANET so actually this is an integration and what we see here is a scenario in which the IOT based VANET has been depicted has been shown this is the whole story right what you see here is an example of 
an IoT based uh, smart city having the role of OneNet in them. Let us discuss some of them. First, we have different uh, communication technologies and standards available here. For example, we have WiMAX, we have long term uh, evaluation, LTE actually, we have Wi Fi, we have Zigbee, low pain, <coughs> and so we have there. So different uh, heterogeneous type communication within a smart city. Now comes to the applications of the Vanet. One of the application is the smart parking system. We have a parking space slot available here and we have an access point for example here which will communicate the free space information to this vehicle and this vehicle would be able to park uh, the vehicle the driver would be able to park his vehicle in this space which is available similarly we have a crash here uh, between two cars so uh, the message is propagated to other vehicles you see uh, we have a response uh, a police vehicle is here to provide uh, services to the vehicles which are actually engaged in the crash and then we can also have the surveillance cameras installed at different locations so this is the aspect of the vanet and then we also have the internet of things here we have smart homes uh, with different devices uh, actually connected with the internet we have smart meters as i mentioned in one of the example uh, of the exemplary uh, city which is the city of Stanford that they, they are actually uh, deploying smart meters so this could be the case uh, we can actually deploy uh, smart meters and we can get the reading from a remote area similarly we have the smart grid concept here which is another component of the smart city we have smart waste management if the dust bin uh, if the cab if the dust bin is full or near to full it will inform the authorities uh, by sending a message and then the authority will send the vehicle to to get the the trash uh, to the appropriate locations uh, similarly we have a smart ambulance service here for example in case of this road accident the message could be uh, transmitted to a nearby hospital and then the hospital uh, would be able to send an ambulance to the to specified location where the accident has been occurred we also have another smart home here in uh, in which different uh, actually the IoT concept is here as well the different devices are connected with the internet for example the bulbs, the locks uh, and other appliances you can connect them and you can control them from anywhere if they are connected with the internet uh, similarly we have smart industry concept here and also uh, if we are talking about the smart cities then uh, it is not only the vanet which is playing the, the its role it is not the smart grids only we also can include uh, for example underwater sensor networks in order to extend the operation of the smart city to the marine to the underwater sea uh, and also underground network would be there and so on so this is like a heterogeneous type of network where different technologies in respect of communication in respect of sensing in respect of uh, of collecting data they are mentioned and they are connected with one another so the role of one it is only part of this whole scenario you can actually extend this scenario to other things as well so uh, from research point of view uh, you can actually identify different areas and different challenges here in this heterogeneous type network or IoT based a vehicular ad hoc network different challenges are there which require attentions of the researchers uh, to be uh, to be solved so uh, this was about today lecture uh, in today lecture uh, we talk about uh, we talk about intelligent transportation system uh, what are intelligent transportation system for example uh, they 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 make use of the information communication technologies uh, to apply them to the transportation sector and their dream is to make our transportation 
uh, congestion free uh, accident free and also uh, environmental friendly and also uh, to consume less fuels and less CNG for example for driving purposes and to meet the objective of intelligent transportation system we discuss how the vehicular ad hoc network is on his way to meet the objectives of the intelligent transportation system in order how what is the role of one it in making our transportation more safer more economical more enjoyable more entertainable by providing different services uh, to the drivers and to the passengers so in order to meet the objectives of the ITS the concept of one it emerges uh, then uh, we saw some of the characteristics of the vehicular ad hoc network for example they are self-organized they have high mobility they have small intercontact time they have different topologies and different operational environments they have no constraints over the energy <coughs> but they have reservations on the bandwidth and they have issues like the network fragmentation intermittent connections and different densities of the vehicles then we switch our attention to different types of uh, vehicular ad hoc network communication uh, for example uh, we studied about the vehicular to vehicle or v2v -V communication then we saw aspect of vehicle to infrastructure or infrastructure to vehicle communication and we also see the hybrid communication uh, and their role uh, in vehicular ad hoc network and also we saw that there is a general term which is called the V2X communication uh, and we elaborate what V2X actually refers to. We saw some of the application areas. Broadly, we can classify the applications into two categories, uh, safety applications and non-safety applications. Inside safety application, we saw some examples, for example, uh, collision, avoidance, lane change assistance, post crash notification and also in the non safety application list we saw some examples like road sensing traffic efficiency advertisement and discovery comfort and entertainment related applications parking information and so on uh, we also uh, see uh, some important components of the vehicular ad hoc network and they are the onboard unit and our SU roadside unit uh, lastly about uh, the one it we explore some uh, simulation approaches if somebody is interested in performing a uh, one it related simulations then different options are actually available for example uh, we have the isolated simulation approach available we have the embedded simulation approach available and most commonly the federated simulation approach is also available then we shift our attention to some uh, standard and one of the standard for the vehicular ad hoc network is called the wave architecture or wireless access in vehicular environment which is actually based on the OSI or TCP layered architecture uh, we saw some of the standard that have been proposed for the wave architecture like IEEE 1609.1 standard 1609.2 uh, uh, dot three dot four and then we also have for the physical and the Mac layer IEEE 2.11 P standard and for the messages syntax and semantic uh, we have the Society of Automotive uh, Engineers standard that is called the Sci J2735 standard which is also which has been standardized as well and then uh, we uh, shed some light over the multi-channel operation which is an important aspect of the vehicular ad hoc network uh, we discussed about the different channels that are available for example the control channel the service channels uh, and the, their uses that the control channel is dedicated for for the use of set safety applications while the first and the last channel are reserved for a uh, critical safety of life and high power public safety while the rest of the four uh, which are called the service channel they could be actually used by the safety as well as by the known safety applications and finally we end up this presentation with a scenario and the scenario was actually a smart city scenario uh, which uh, uh, we, we, we saw different standards in the in the scenario uh, uh, different uh, we saw different smart grids uh, we saw smart houses smart metering concept underwater sensor networks in that and uh, 
and actually a heterogeneous scenario and we saw the role of vehicular ad hoc network in smart cities and more specifically the role of warnet in transportation which is actually an important component of the smart city and how it can actually help the smart cities to to uh, to address the problems of the urbanization and to address the problem related with the transportation like congestion like fuel consumption like carbon dioxide emission uh, and so on so this was uh, today lecture and i hope that you uh, would able this lecture would allow you to uh, to learn something new something interesting about the emerging uh, network which is the vehicular ad hoc network uh, well i am available to questions and answer if you have some question related uh, with the vehicular ad hoc network concept or uh, is more specifically with the simulations performing simulations with veins framework with omnet plus plus and with sumo you can actually leave comments here at the bottom of this video i would try to to incorporate to give suggestions and answer your queries related with the topic so with these uh, comments i would thank you all for your time for watching this video and for being uh, for such a long time thank you so much and fi amanillah allah hafiz